Good morning. Welcome to the Kirk Has Glasses uh, stream, the Footlight Theater, where we watch public domain movie. I literally double checked to make sure that was centered, and I wake up the <laughs> the stream, and I'm not. I always need that morning commentary on a, on a Monday morning. <laughs> well, I'm glad to provide that for you, past tense. Glad to provide that for you. And I hope everybody's ready to uh, be provided a cinematic experience. Because uh, Detour uh, is a public domain film. I had never heard of it. And while researching movies to do for the stream, because it's been going on for quite a while, almost a full year, I think, of the stream's been going on a year and a, and, and a change, but... Movies have only been uh, going about for a year now. And uh, you'd think I'd be running out of movies, and that's just not the case. It becomes more of a question of which movies to do. And uh, I try to keep Mondays for ones that might be good, and Fridays for what will probably be bad. So this movie detour was on a list compiled by Wired Magazine. Not in print form. We're not cavemen. Uh, they did a article about the best public domain film. And Detour was at the top and I had never heard of it. So according to a Wired Magazine article from 2006, this is the best public domain film to watch. And the story seems pretty interesting. About a gentleman traveling across country. Hitches a ride with the dude. The dude dies. He has to assume his identity to get across the country. So that... Um, he doesn't get arrested, I guess. I don't, I, I don't remember reading exactly how the dude died. I don't believe that the gentleman who was hitchhiking murdered him. And I'm not sure exactly why he has to take his identity, but I imagine the film will let us know. I'm sure there's a reason. He wouldn't just do that for kicks and giggles. I'm sure he has a reason for assuming a man's identity to get across the country. But we don't know what that is. Until we watch Detour... But from what I read uh, in the Wired article, uh, supposedly this gave birth to the renaissance of noir film. And one of the reasons noirs were so popular in um, this era of filmmaking. So we might have a good one on our hands. So, uh, I mean, I'm excited to see. Uh, speaking of blatant ripoffs, because um, <laughs> that's usually what that means. Same thing how, like, Saw inspired the genre of torture porn, which I disagree with. I think it was a decent story that people took the wrong elements of and then made shitty movies. Uh, much like that, I don't know if um, anyone here has seen any trailers for them. I just I feel like I have to say something about this. Even though it doesn't matter and not many people will even know what I'm talking about or care about what I'm talking about, but there is a Amazon television show that is coming out called Them. And that television program from the trailer looks like a bunch of people who watched Jordan Peele's Get Out and Jordan Peele's Us and said, we need to make that and have no idea what makes those movies good. Because it looks like creepy, creepy racism. I think Amazon was like, let's make the creepy racism show. It's hot right now. And let's call it the literal antithesis of us. <laughs> like people won't notice. And make a trailer that looks like both Get Out and Us slam together. And maybe we'll get people into thinking that maybe it's a sequel to the Us or something. I think they even have an actress who was in Us. And it's just, uh, it's just frustrating. Because to me blatantly ripping off movies like Get Out and Us really shows that you have no idea what makes those movies good. And, uh, you know, it's a frustrating, a frustrating thing to say. Of course, I mean, Amazon doesn't care. Uh, anyone who was involved in greenlighting that project sleeps on a big pile of money and showers in the tears of the unfortunates, but it is frustrating as a member of a first world empire to see 
that our entertainment is just blatant ripoffs of much better, much more thought-provoking entertainment. And isn't that true of everything? I'm sure Dieter, T D Dieter, a little detour, not Dieter, Detour was ripped off in many ways, and we'll see its. We'll probably see how it kind of paved the way for other moments that we thought were original. You're a ripoff of a, the got milk cow? Well, past tense, I don't know if you were trying to insult me because of my weight, but you've succeeded. I, uh. I don't believe I am the proportions of a cow. And cows, uh, don't. It was the black and white motif. Black and white motif. Well, I'm just getting comfortable. This is a this is a robe. Poor clothing choice. Yeah, just felt like uh, phoning it in this morning. You know, it's like, do I get up? Do I find an outfit? You know. Do I take time to think about what I'm wearing for this? Or do I just throw a robe on and put a hat on and just start the show? Because uh, the star of the show today is really detour. It isn't me. I'm speaking out of jealousy. <laughs> you wish you can drink as much milk as I do. Which I think, I think I'm going to convert all my, uh... I can't because of my wife. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I kind of want to uh, convert my entire TikTok account. Um, and now milk hates me. What did milk ever do to you? If your body can't handle milk, that's on you. I've said it to people who are lactose intolerant for years. If you can't handle the lactose... That's your problem. That's because you're a bitch. And your body can't handle the milk. That shows to be bitch moves on your part, not milk's. milk's did, milk did nothing wrong. Milk just existed, and it's rad. And your body has decided that I can't handle that much rad inside me. So you really gotta take a look inward. If your body can't handle milk. It hurts your stomach now? Well. Wow. wow. How unfortunate for you. Just living in that world of uh, delicious dairy. <laughs> living in that world of delish dairy. Detour. Also, this movie is only an hour and seven. Gonna get out of here quick. For all those that got shit to do. It's only an hour long. Um, <laughs> that is a very interesting thing talking with uh, people who are lactose intolerant because of how much milk I drink and those people be like oh my god milk is so disgusting and it destroys my body um, can, we all, can we talk about how awesome chocolate milk is or strawberry this is going to sound insane shadow this is going to sound absolutely insane because chocolate milk is the shit I love chocolate milk Chocolate milk's delicious. I don't think I've ever actually had strawberry milk. I don't think I've ever had it. <laughs> and now there's a gang war about which milk is acceptable. <laughs> we have the Crips and Bloods of uh, flavored milk here today. <laughs> and they are not going to get along. I don't think I've ever had a taste of strawberry milk. I think what happened was... Because my milk mentor must have been my father, because he we all drink so much milk. And I think he just said, like, yeah, strawberry milk is not that good. Chocolate milk's good, but strawberry milk is not that good. Because I don't think I, I've never even had the curiosity to have strawberry milk. I'll make sure to get you some for the wedding. Yes, please. Give me some strawberry milk for your wedding. If you want me, look. <laughs> Past tense, if you, if you want me to get milk drunk at your wedding, it's gonna happen. And a signed copy of Airplane. <laughs> it seems like you're bribing me to go to your wedding, which I want to go to. <laughs> uh, 
The only way we can get Kirk's appearance fee to your wedding. Signed copies of films and milk. <laughs> it's the only way you'll get me there to celebrate your matrimony. If you don't if you don't got if you don't got films, if you don't got films or milk, I don't even know why you're asking. Your invitation to me might as well be signed movie merchandise or dairy. I already got Rick and Sean celebrity gifts. <laughs> well, yeah, Rick wanted a uh, Rick wanted that dildo in the shape of his favorite gay porn star, right? Oh, that's right. You had Batman wish him a happy birthday. That's right. Kevin Conroy. That lucky bastard. <laughs> the voice of Batman. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good birthday gift. It's a pretty good birthday gift. Wait, hold on. I can show you my fi one of my favorite birthday gifts. I forgot I had this until just now. Hold on. Hold on. I have to uh, put it in this put it in this protective thing. And a sloth from Zootopia over Sean. Um, that is a signed script from Community. A few paintballs more. Signed by the cast of Community. Vet Nicole Brown, Gillian Jacobs. I don't know who that is off the top. I think Allison Bree, Joel McHale, Danny Pudi. So that must be the Childish Gambino himself. Yeah, I can't tell. Or is that Donald Glover? I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't pick out each one. Mm -hmm. Jim Rash though, that's pretty cool. Yeah, for my 21st birthday, this is all to do a we'll do in birthday stories. For my 21st birthday, my brother's girlfriend, who at the time worked at the Paramount lot where they shot community. Um, she found out my 21st birthday was coming up. And she knew how much I loved community, which I did. A whole bunch. And um she knew somebody who worked on the set there and was like, oh, my my boyfriend's brother, huge fan of Community. It's his 21st birthday coming up. And then they just came out of a script room or the reading room and threw her that script that was signed by the whole cast. It was like, they love, they love fan interaction here, so give that to him. Also, he can come by. And I went to the Community set um, for my 21st birthday and walked around. And it was... I didn't meet anybody, and honestly, I didn't really want to meet anybody, because it feels like it feels like that's where they're working, you know? Like, if somebody just showed up at my work and was like, hey, let's hang out, and I'd be like, well, I gotta do, like, my job. <laughs> and uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bother anybody, but yeah, walking around that set was just next level. It was when they were doing the pillows and blankets, so they actually had they had the desk and this is all community uh stuff <laughs> if you don't watch community they didn't have the desk in the study room that was completely um taken out for the scene i'm guessing where don glover and danny pooty start the um the <laughs> pillow <laughs> pillow fight and so it was completely empty but walking through it was just surreal as hell and then the, the, i walked through the dean's office but then I didn't realize what I was seeing because I was just like, what the fuck is that about? I walked by the pillow it glue situation where John Goodman and Danny Pudi had a conversation inside of it. And it was uh, it was a cool experience. And also that script. I mean, that script is in a protective thing and I can't take care of it more than my degrees from. I mean, I don't count it as a degree, but my. High school diploma and my college <laughs> diploma. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I graduated from these places, but yeah, that's a signed community script. Anyway, um, that was a story about birthdays. So no, I didn't get a happy birthday from Batman, but I do have 
the cast of Community's signatures on a script of one of my favorite episodes of Community. So that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty fantastic. Anyways, enough stories, enough jaw jacking, and soon to be assigned airplane DVD. That I need to figure out how I'm going to keep that dude safe. Because uh, I don't know where where I can put that dude to make sure no one gets their grubby hands on it. Um. All right, let's get to detour, huh? I have been detouring from what, the beginning of this movie, so let's start it, shall we? Let's bring down the music. Okay, dad jokes. Um, that's my brand, dude. Puns and dad jokes, that's my bread and butter. That's just what I'm operating in. Detour! Mm. Oh my gosh. Yawns, yawns. Detour! Starring Tom Neal and Anne Savage, with Claudia Drake, Edmund McDonald, Tim Ryan, Esther Howard, and Pat Gleason. A lot of whiteies. A lot of whiteies. Screenplay and original story by Martin Goldsmith. Musical store by Erdo er Erdotti? Is that like Junkie XL who did the fucking <laughs> Zack Snyder Justice League? Also, Max is here. He's uh, laying down on the floor, so it's hard to get to him. Leon Frumkus. Martin Mooney. Edgar G. Ulmer. Detouring it up. He looks fucking... <laughs> the hell? Well, here we are. I turned down here at the next block. Thanks, mister. I'll get off there. Oh, they're in Reno. Is this a Reno 911 crossover? Want anything else? No. Hey, you. What hey, yeah, you. What the f- Where you heading? East. I thought if you was heading north, I might be able to help you out. I'm pushing the Salt Lake, and I don't like to ride it alone at night. <laughs> I'm one of those guys who got to talk or I fall asleep. Oh, sure, no mind. My partner, he's got Lou to keep him company, but I ain't got nobody at all. Where are you coming from? West. Yeah, sure, I know, but where, L.A.? Maybe. I got a cousin out in L.A. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, he's been out. <laughs> You're not much of a talker, are you? My mother taught me never to speak to strangers. Oh, a wise guy. So what? Okay, okay, don't get sore. Just trying to be sociable, that's all. <laughs> hey, Glamorous. That's a show for him. You change for a dime, would you? Back when coffee was like a nickel. Let's have something quieter this time, Joe. My head's splitting. Is that what's wrong with it? <laughs> Done with your coffee? No. And don't rush me, will you? <laughs> He's just real snappy. Hey, turn that off. Will you turn that thing off? What's eating you now? Yeah, what's eating you? That yeah. music, it stinks. Oh, you don't like it, huh? No, turn it off. Oh, wait a minute, pal. Your music's shit. Mind it, see? This is a free country. And I play whatever I wanted. Sure. And if you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. And you can leave here anytime you want it. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I asked. First good piece play tonight and you don't like it. Some people just ain't got any good Rick Astley. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. I hate that fucking meme. Fuck this place. That tune. That tune. Why was there always that rotten tune? following me around, beating in my head, never letting up. Did you ever want to forget anything? 
Did you ever want to cut away a piece of your memory or blot it out? You can't, you know. <laughs> no matter how hard you try. I mean, have you tried blunt force trauma? But sooner or later, you'll get a whip of perfume where somebody will say a certain phrase or maybe hum something. Then you're licked again. <laughs> He's pretending the coffee cup's talking to him. Love with me. I used to love that song once. So did the customers back in the old Break at Dawn Club in New York. I can't remember a night when I didn't get at least three requests for it. Sue, she was always selling it too. Those were the days. Oh shit. Is that dude even touching the drums? He's not touching the drums. He's a pianist. And he cleans up nice. Kind of like a, he's got like a little bit of a skinny Brando feel. <laughs> he's a drummer. He's a ventriloquist drummer. <laughs> Some would call him a ventriloquist drummy. <laughs> You're welcome. God, this fucking place is white. This looks like the off-white section of a fucking paint store. I can't believe that you're in love with me. So what happened to her? What happened to you? Thing. You know the kind. A joint where you could have a sandwich and a few drinks and run interference for your girl on the dance floor. I pounded the piano in there every night from eight until the place closed up, which usually meant four in the morning. A good job as jobs went in those days. Then too, there was Sue, who made working there a little like working in heaven. But how we felt about each other Because she put out all the time that. I was an ordinary healthy guy And she was an ordinary healthy girl And when you add those two together You get an ordinary healthy romance <laughs> Which is the old story Unless sure. one of you is gay But somehow We're not attracted to the other wonderful thing in the world Damn, he's just tickling them ivories All in all, I was a pretty lucky guy He's like, is there a flood in here? Jesus Christ. She is just fiendish. Mr. Paderewski, I presume. It's beautiful. You're going to make Carnegie Hall yet, Al? Yeah, as a janitor. I'll make my debut in the basement. I don't blame you for being bitter, darling, but you mustn't give up hope. Why, someday... Oh, yeah, damn. Someday. I don't get arthritis first. In the meantime, let's blow this trap. <laughs> Stop being supportive and helpful. It's so womanly. <laughs> I mean, he plays a fucking mean piano. Like to get something to eat, hon? Ordinary. <laughs> Nothing like ordinary, ordinary man. Let's go home. Okay. I can't stand much more of that dump. Did you see that drunk tonight trying to paw me? No. Are we covering up the fact that there's no set with just intense fog? <laughs> so what's the matter with you tonight, darling? That's the third time milk. Is that something. milk? Then stop. We shouldn't have any secrets from each other, Sue. Next week we're going to make with the ring and the license. You and me will be a team. Yes, that's right. In the Bush League. I don't get you. We've been struck out. What? Funny way to talk, darling. Don't you want to marry me? Al, look, I love you. You know I do, and I want to marry you. What the fuck but, is happening? But not now. Only after we've made good. <laughs> Sunday I'm going away. Oh, I know you'll think it's silly. That's why I hesitated to tell you. But I'm going to California. Damn. I want to try my luck in Hollywood. That's the most stupid thing I ever heard of. <laughs> Don't you know millions of people go out there every year and wind up polishing cuspidors? I thought you had better sense. You cuspidors? What the fuck are cuspidors? I'll make out all right. Maybe. But what about me? Doesn't it mean anything to you that you're busting up all our plans? 
We may not see each other for years. It won't be that long. Shit. I thought you loved me. I do. You know I do. Well, here we are. Cuspidors. What are fucking cuspidors? Al. Al, why can't you see my side of it? I'm young. We both are. And we've got Cuspidors. all the time in the world to settle down. Spittoons. <laughs> really, darling? What I'm doing That's crazy. I've never heard of cuspidors, and apparently it's a I, spittoon. I hate the thought of being so far away from you, but but we'll be together again someday. Maybe you'll decide to come out too later on. So long. Al, aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? Uh, why? Sure. You're why? fucking leaving. I'm gonna go beat my meat. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Aren't you gonna kiss me goodnight? You're fucking leaving. What would be the point? You mean kiss you goodbye? Because you're fucking leaving? And no one cares about the hard-working pianist that can kick ass on them ivories, no. They all just want to see the woman sing. God damn. He's just going ham on them. Oh shit, is he doing some boss music? <laughs> cool beans. He's just getting sadder and sadder, staring at the wall as he's just kicking ass on the piano. Is he doing Dragon Force? What? <laughs> They're like, could you tell him to calm the fuck down? That's what he's gonna do, huh? They just don't appreciate greatness. Say, Roberts, you hit the jackpot this time. Ten bucks. Thanks. Ten bucks in 1945. Table three wants one to roll. Um, somebody's asking for WAP. Can you do that on piano? What was it, I asked myself. A piece of paper calling with germs. Couldn't buy anything I wanted. It couldn't... <laughs> then I thought of something. Ten dollars in... 1945. Holy fuck, is that true? Someone tipped that motherfucker $146. Holy shit. God damn. And they didn't even ask him to play anything. Here's $146. Long distance. Play, uh, <laughs> bye bye bye. Miss Harvey. Sue Harvey. H A R V E Y. The number is Crestview 65723. You know, it, it might sound boring and kind of daddish. I wish I understood how this worked. Like the nuts and bolts of it. I, I get the basic concept, but like just... <laughs> Because it boggles my mind that there was just like a army of women, usually women. Hello, Sue? Probably like two dudes. Al. Oh, baby, it's great to hear from you, too. That What's are just that? like boom, 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 oh, boom, boom. Me too, darling. I thought I'd go batty without you. I just had to. Huh? She's fucking other dudes, You're bro. As a hashlinger. She's fucking Gee, other honey, dudes. That's tough. Those guys out in Hollywood don't know the real thing when it's right in front of them. You just stick it out, Sue, baby. Keep going around to those casting offices. I'm sure you'll click. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. You stay put out there. I'll come to you. No, don't try to stop me. Just <laughs> your mind is easily boggled. Train? You're not oh, bad. No, that's Robin Williams. Oops, I'm just mean. I have to crawl. <laughs> Whatever. I have to By the way, hi, oops. <laughs> and then let's get married right away, huh? That's the stuff. That's what I've been wanting to hear you say. Well, 
Goodbye for now. <laughs> She's just listening to this crazy man go on and on. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> that cutback was her t listening to some other guy. <laughs> the only way I could cross country was to thumb rides. Or even after hockey, Oops, it's a real bummer to not to uh, Money. not to bring up you know what old shit. It's, it's a bummer you weren't here for the last movie we did where they completely shafted the female character, and I would have loved your opinion on what happened. Die for. It's a stuff that has caused more trouble in the world than anything else we ever invented. Simply because there's too little of it. At least I had too little of it. So it was me for the thumb. His pants are high as fuck. Hold on. You see how his pants are like at his nips almost. His pants are at least over his belly button. Ever done any hitchhiking? It's not much fun, believe me. Oh yeah, I know all about how it's an education, how you get to meet a lot of people and all that. Yeah, you can also me, be murdered very nicely. On, I'll take my education in college. Or in PS 62, or I'll send a dollar ninety eight in stamps for ten easy lessons. <laughs> Coming rides may save your bus fare. Nothing like hiding foopas. You never know what's in store for you. You hear the squeal of brakes. Would you say he might be might have enlisted in the Fupa Troopers? I hate that indicator when it's open, so make sure it's closed. I would never. You know what? Maybe it's because I don't trust people. I would never hitchhike, man. Do not trust it. I barely trust my friends driving. Because as it is now, you never know what's right and what's wrong. We rode along for a little while, neither one of us saying anything. I was glad of that. I never know what to say to strange people driving cars. <laughs> and two, you can never tell if a guy wants to talk. A lot of rides have been cut short because of a big mouth. So I kept my mouth shut until he started opening up. Hand me that little box in the compartment, will you, pal? Detour, also known as oh, Original wait, wait. Uber. Going. LA. Wow, you're really traveling, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't expect to make it for a couple of years at the rate I've been promoting rides. Not much luck, huh? Sure, all bad. Not many people stop for a guy these days. Afraid of a stick up, maybe. Well, they can't blame him. Where are you coming from? New York? Well, New York. Oh, I did the opposite of this trip. You're in luck this time. I'm going all the way. Right through to Los Angeles. You drive a car? Sure. Have you tired? Let me know. I'll holla. Holla. I guess at least an hour passed before I noticed those deep scratches in his right hand. They were wicked. Three puffy red lines about a quarter of an inch apart. Wow, he's going to turn into a werewolf? He's seen me looking at them because he said, Beauties, aren't they? They're going to be scars someday. <laughs> what an animal. What an animal. It, it must have been pretty big and vicious to have done that. Right on both counts, New York. I was tussling with the most dangerous animal in the world. A woman? A woman. Uh. She must have been Tarzan's mate. Looks like you lost the bout. Certainly wasn't a draw. You know, there ought to be a law against dames with claws. Yeah. I tossed her out of the car in her ear. <laughs> what a gentleman. <laughs> Give a lift to a tomato, you expect it to be nice, don't you? Yeah. After all, what kind of a dame some rides? Sunday school teachers? The same kind of dames that thumb butts. You must have thought she was riding with some fall guy. And me, who's been booking horses around race tracks since I was 20. And I've known a million dames like her. Two million. Yeah. <laughs> Stopped the car, opened the door. Take it on the art the Duffy sister, I told her. That's good stuff. As I was done, huh? <laughs> but if you want to see a real scar, brother, get a load of this. Oh. Wow. I got that one doing. Dueling? Yeah, we're just kidding, of course. 
My dad owned a couple of Franco-Prussian sabers. Kept them on the wall for decorations. Dude. Uh, one day, another kid and I took them down. You... The old man wasn't around. Had a duel. He got me in the arm here. Yeah, no what shit. What do you mean, cut? Infection set in later. Yeah, I can see that. Now, give me that box again, will you? Yeah. This dude is not somebody you want to be driving with. He's dueling fuckers. Possibly assaulting women. Pain made me lose my head, I guess. I began slashing. Before I knew it, I put the other kid's eye out. Oh, it was tough. Well, it was just an accident, of course. Do you know how kids are? I got scared, decided I was going to run away from home. Old man almost caught me when I was packing my duds. The bloody rag I had wrapped around my wrist hadn't caught his attention. It seemed a bundle for sure. But I beat it when he was phoning for a doctor. I was 15, 16 years ago. I haven't been home since. Wait, so what, is he like 30? Pull in there for a bite or something, huh? A bite or something. Brother, was I hungry. I hadn't had anything in my stomach for hours. Yet even with that noise, I, <laughs> I hadn't had anything in my stomach for like 20 minutes. I was so hungry. First, I and road trips make me super hungry. If I got him down on me, I'd buy a ticket to Hollywood. I'll wait out here for you, mister. Well, there's some money. Don't worry about paying for it. This time it's on me. Well, that's what... Pascal, make nothing of it. You make your first million, maybe you can do the same for me. Come on, New York. I gotta make the West Coast by Wednesday. The horse running at Santa Anita named... He's trying, to, he's trying to hook up with this dude. He's trying to hook up. Engaging physically. Nurturing dependence. He did most of the talking during the half hour we were in the place. I ate. He rambled on about his old man, whom he hadn't heard from since he ran away as a kid. Now he happened to become a bookie. And then all about how he got rooked in Miami. One race, 38 grand. They cleaned out my book. How do you like that? That was tough luck. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be the smart guy. Well, you just wait. I'm going back to Florida next season with all kinds of jack. And you'll watch those stinkers run for cover. You want anything else? No, thanks. I've had plenty. Can I check there, sister? Oh, just a minute. You're changed, sir. Keep it, sister. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, damn. Wait outside for him when you finish work. Look at this smooth motherfucker. He's whining and he's dying. No thanks, I. I drove all that night while Haskell slept like a log. After a while, I began to get sleepy myself. I was happy though. Soon I'd be with Sue again. Mm -hmm. The long trip was practically over, and there'd be no more hoofing it down the concrete. <laughs> I began to think of the future. It couldn't have been brighter if I had Words you'll never hear Rick say about Dick, either. It was nice to Sue shooting to the top. Oh, that gay, gay man. So gay. what a full belly can do to your imagination. Oh my god, she's playing with a shadow band. Oops is just a very, very, very convincing beard. Let's be serious. Let's be serious here. <laughs> I missed what he said. Look at that shot. 1945. Mr. Haskell. Oh, it's raining. Mr. Haskell. Mr. Haskell, wake up. It's raining. Don't you think we ought to stop and put up the top? I mean, just stop and do it yourself. Fuck. I mean, do you need permission? <laughs> I think if I woke up and a dude had, like, put the top up on, uh, <laughs> I'm not a beard. <laughs> um, but I think if I woke up and a dude put the top up because it was raining. stepped in and shunted me off to a different destination than the one I had picked for myself. The one I pulled open that door. 
God. Haskell, what's the matter? Are you hurt? He landed on a Are rock. You hurt, Mr. Haskell? Start your sermon. I'll listen to it. But I know what you're going to hand me even before you open your mouths. You're going to tell me you don't believe my story of how Haskell died and give me that don't make me laugh expression on your smug faces. Shit, okay, don't yell at me. I believe you so far, fuck. Once he was dead, and I was in for it. Who would believe he fell out of the car? Why, if Haskell came too, which of course he couldn't, even he would swear I conked him over the head for his dough. Yes, I was in for it. Instinct told me to run, but then I realized it was hopeless. There were lots of people back down the road who could identify me. That gas station guy and the waitress. I would be in a worse spot then, trying to explain why I beat it. The next possibility was to sit tight and tell the truth when the cops came. But that would be crazy. They'd laugh at the truth. Not having my head in the noose. Hmm. I don't really... So what else was it to do but hide the body and get away in the car? I couldn't leave the car there with him in the gully. He probably like was taking store. meds, bro. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a nice way to get a free car. You gotta think about the positives. You know, you gotta see the glass is half full. You gotta see the milk glass half full on this one. <laughs> so, he was asleep. My idea was to cover him with brush. Not to rob him. But then I remember that even if I only drove the car for a hundred miles or so, I would need money for gas. Besides, it was stupid of me to leave all that money on a dead man. Not only that, I'd have to take his driver's license in case I was stopped for something. <laughs> I didn't yeah, this is why no one believes your story. I'd done just what the police would say I did, even <laughs> if I didn't. I close. The owner of such an expensive car would never be wearing it. Some cop might pull me in on suspicion. So, this guy's thought process is, see, if you weren't in his clothes, this wouldn't look as bad. Hey, you, this your car? Don't you know better than to leave a car with the wheels halfway in the middle of the road? That's the way accidents happen. I, I'm sorry, officer. I was just putting up my top. I, I didn't think. Well, the next time, think. I'll let you go now, but watch your step in the future. I know that's a lonely stretch, but cars come by here once in a while, and we have plenty of crack ups. Thanks. <laughs> so he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's either lying, he's either an unreliable narrator or not very smart. Because <laughs> the idea of, oh my god, if I tell them the truth, they're going to think I just murdered him. I better make it look like I murdered him for all of his stuff and just keep going. I left nothing in the car to give me away as Roberts. If they found a dead man in the gully now, it would be me. Wow. I mean, this wouldn't be my logic, but I've questioned my own manhood several times. And the drop streaked down the windshield like tears. Like it was raining. I kept imagining I was being followed and that I could hear sirens back in the distance. Just how long it took me to cover the 60 odd miles to the California. <laughs> You're not a man unless you've questioned know. it once or twice. I lost all track of time. But the rain had stopped and the sun was up when I pulled up to the inspection station. Anything to declare? Uh, I killed a man and took all his shit. Carrying any fruits or vegetables? No. Any livestock or poultry? No. I see your registration and driver's license, please. Who? They have photos on licenses by this time? Baggage. Charles Haskell Jr., age 30, brown eyes, dark hair. Identifying marks, none. Are you Charles Haskell Jr.? Yes. Well, remember, if you're employed and you stay over 30 days, you take out California plates. All right, oh. officer, but I'll only be in the state a short while. Right, you can go now. 30 days? Holy shit, okay. That seems stupid. I couldn't drive any farther without some sleep. Cops or no cops. I knew I had to hit the hay and hit it hard. I was dead tired. Oh wow, this is before driver's license had photos. 
So he could really get away with this. Interesting. Guys, I got a kilo of coke from him. <laughs> He'll never know it's missing. <laughs> I used his money, got a nice hotel, wore his clothes. He thinks he killed him by him dropping out of the car and his head hitting a rock. His, his entire thought process is, no one will believe that he just died in the car. He must have died when his head hit the rock when I tried to get him out of the car. No, bitch. Later. In a half hour. All right, sir. Well, if my name is a Mr. Haskell that I have to repeat to remind myself that that's my name now. time to lose. Every minute I had to be Charles Haskell was dangerous. And I'd have to be Charles Haskell until I got to some city where I could leave the car and be swallowed up. That meant driving the car as far as San Bernardino, maybe even to Los Angeles. In a little town I might be noticed, but in a city I should be safe enough. Then, after I ditched the car, I could go on to Sioux. <laughs> After that, after enjoying all the money that he had. realize it might be a good idea to find out a little bit about Mr. Haskell. Then if anybody asked me questions, I could give the right answers. The first thing I found out was that I had $768. $768. But believe me, it was the kind of money I'd rather not have. <laughs> I'm still using it. Then I found out from a letter Haskell was carting around in his bag that he wasn't the open-handed, easy-going big shot. That's $20,000 today. Hitchhikers. Before I got done reading it, I saw him more as a chiseler. It was written to his old man in California, the one he hadn't seen in so many years. In it, Haskell posed as a salesman of hymnals, of all things. Yeah, he's a real piece of shit. Where Haskell expected to raise a new stake for his book in Miami by rooking his old man. That was about all I found out from his effects. And it was enough. I told myself, maybe old man Haskell was lucky his son kicked off. He would never know it. But it saved him from taking the a flyer in sacred literature preferred. The fucking balls on this dude. The fucking balls. What a piece of shit. What a piece of human shit. I'm glad he's dead and then I took all his shit. He's an idiot that is doing everything he's afraid people will think he'd do. Near the airport at Desert Center, I pulled up for water. Uh-oh. We got ourselves a woman. Hey, well, I'm a new person. That means I can bone ladies. My logic is sound. She's going in for the kill. Man, for how scary it is for a dude to hitchhike, imagine being a woman. Yeah, sure, I could take a hitchhiker. I'm just pretending to be another person. Going. That took me by surprise, and I turned my head to look her over. She was facing straight ahead, so I couldn't see her eyes. But she was young, not more than 24. Man, she looked as if she'd just been thrown off the crummiest freight train in the world. 
Then wouldn't she be happy because it was a crummy freight train? Crummy freight train. Not a crummy freight train. Mind you, or the beauty you dream about when you're with your wife, but a natural beauty. A beauty that's almost homely because it's so real. Then suddenly she turned to face me. How far did you say you were going? Los Angeles. L.A.? L.A. is good enough for me, mister. But I was afraid of... What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. People get in trouble for doing that. What's your name? You can call me Vera if you like. You live in Los Angeles? No. Where are you coming from? Oh, back there. Needles? No. <laughs> oh, sure. Phoenix. You look just like a Phoenix girl. Are the girls in Phoenix that bad? The girl must have been pretty tired because she fell asleep not 20 minutes after she stepped in. That, this woman is too trusting of this random strange man. Against the far door, like Haskell. I didn't like that part of it much, but I didn't wake her up. It wasn't that this girl still worried me. I'd gotten over that funny feeling I had when she looked at me, which I put down as just my jangled nerves. With her eyes closed and the testness gone out of her. She seemed harmless enough. And instead of disliking her, I began to feel sorry for her. <laughs> and soon I was sexually attracted to her. Who was she anyway? And why was she going, going to, to Phoenix Kansas? Universe? And where'd she come from? Isn't the University of Phoenix? <laughs> the only thing I knew about it was her name. Not that it made any difference. A few hours more and we'd be in Hollywood. I'd forget where I parked the car and look up Sue. This nightmare of being a dead man would be over. I never went, so I don't care. Well, it was no business of mine. Where did you leave his body? Where did you leave the owner of this car? You're not fooling anyone. This buggy belongs to a guy named Haskell. That's not you, mister. You're out of your mind. That's my name, Charles Haskell. I can prove it. It's my driver's Save license. Save yourself the trouble, mister. Having Haskell's wallet only makes it worse. It just so happens I rode with Charlie Haskell all the way from Louisiana. He picked me up outside of Shreveport. You rode... You heard me. Then it all came back to me. All the talk about dueling and scars and scratches. There was no doubt about it. Vera must be the woman Haskell had mentioned. She must have passed me. What I... are the fucking well, odds? Well, I'm waiting. My goose was cooked. She had me. That Haskell guy wasn't dead yet. He wasn't stretched out stiff and cold in any Arizona gully. He was sitting right there in the car, laughing like mad while he haunted me. Well. There was nothing I could say. Was her move. Vera, okay. whatever her name was, was just my luck. <laughs> All he has to say is, didn't he try to rape you? Why do you give a fuck? Or Mary or Evelyn or Ruth. It had to be the very last person I should ever have met. That's... That's life. Whichever way you <laughs> That's an interesting turn for this movie to take, but like... <laughs> I don't know, call me, call me crazy, man, but if I got into that car, and, thanks, Max, if I got into that car, and she's like, well, where is he, I'd be like, why do you care? the greatest cock and bull story I ever heard. So he fell out of his car. Say, who do you think you're talking to, a hick? Listen, mister, I've been around, and I know a wrong guy when I see one. This woman's fucking possessed. Now, wait a minute, what I told you was true. You see, that's why I had to do it. You think I killed him. Well, the cops would have thought so, too. Yeah, well, maybe they still think so. What makes you so sure I'll shut up about this? Girl, I'm innocent. Give me a break, will you? It won't do me oh, well, cut it out. Finish. Okay. The cops are no friends of mine. Now, if there was a reward, but there isn't. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I'm not through with you by a long shot. Let's see that roll. <laughs> Is that all Haskell had? Isn't it enough? No, I thought he had more. Not that I know of. You can search me. You think I'm holding out on you? Well, maybe I will at that. He told me he was going to bet $3,000 on a horse named Paradisical on Wednesday at Santa Anita. He was stringing you along. He meant $300. Maybe. Sure, three bucks, 300 He was a piece of cheese, a big blowhard. Listen, mister, don't try and tell me anything about Charlie Haskell. Remember, I knew him better than you did. Okay, then you knew him. Yeah, you've seen his dick. We know that, that, obviously. I'm not so sure he didn't have that three grand. Why should I believe you? You got all the earmarks of a cheap crook. Now, wait a Shut minute. Up. You're a cheap crook and you killed him. For two cents This I woman hasn't fucking blinked. I don't like you. All right, all right. He sucks at being so everything. <laughs> Shit. He sucks at being innocent. He sucks at being guilty. If you shut up and don't give me any arguments, you'll have nothing to worry about. But if you act wise, well, mister, you'll pop into jail so fast it'll give you the bends. I'm not arguing. Well, see that you don't. 
You know, as crooked as you look, I'd hate to see a fella as young as you wind up sniffing that perfume that Arizona hands out free to murderers. I'm not a murderer. Of course you're not. Asco knocked his own head off. He fell, that's how it happened, just like I told you. Sure, and then he made you a present of his belongings. I explained why oh, I had to do that. It. Doesn't make a difference one way or another. I'm not a mourner. I like Tasco even less than I like you. Yeah, then why I do you give a fuck? That's you something mean? I don't understand. <laughs> why do you sure, even care? Don't get it. <laughs> so your idea was to drive the car a little way, maybe into San Bernardino, and then leave it. You weren't gonna sell it? Sell it? You think also, I'm this woman's crazy? voice Somebody is fucking car? annoying me now. <laughs> All I want to do is leave it somewhere and forget I ever saw it. Not only don't you have any scruples, you don't have any brains. I don't get you. Maybe it's a good thing you met me. You'd have got yourself caught, sure. Why, you dope. Don't you know a deserted automobile always rates an investigation? Huh? Look, the cops find a car. Then they get curious. They wonder where the owner is. So, all right, they don't trace Haskell. They trace you. I never thought of that. The only safe way to get rid of the car is to sell it to a dealer. Get it registered under a new name. Say, stop at the next store. I want to get a bottle and do some shopping before we hit L.A. Okay. As soon as we find a place, I'll drop you off and pick you up later. Nothing doing. You're coming in, too. From now on, you and I are like the Siamese twins. Have it your way. If I don't get the point. The point is, I don't want you to get lost. I'm not going to beat it if that's what you're afraid of. I'll say you're not. Well, I'm going to see that you sell this car so you don't get caught. Thanks. Of course, you're interested They're going to fall in love for sure. <laughs> and the you like, <laughs> can the just put the <laughs> Well, now that you insist, how can I refuse? A hundred percent will do. Fine. I'm relieved. I thought for yeah, all he has to do is pull into a cop, like, because the way they treated women at this time, he just needs to pull into a police station and be like, yeah, so this woman uh, and I were hitchhiking, this guy pulled us over, she murdered him, and then told me to be him and go down the road. Vera wasn't kidding with that Siamese twins crack. She rented a little apartment as Mrs. Charles Haskell. When I objected to this, she explained that it was on account of the car. A dealer might think something was funny if he called and found we were using different names. Now he's just getting browbeaten by this woman. Oh, sweet home. Yeah. Not bad either. <laughs> if this is the beginning to How I Met Your Mother, maybe I'd watch that show to the end. In case there's any doubt in your mind, I'll take the bedroom. Yeah. Sure is stuffy in here. Bitch. Keep the window shut. Okay. The old crow downstairs said there's a folding bed behind this door. You know how to work it? I invented it. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a flex? <laughs> First in the bathtub. I don't know why, but I figured you would be. I don't know. What was that about? <laughs> I'm first in the bathtub. Yeah, then I'm going to drink all the water. Like, what the fuck? Do, what is your fucking problem? Boy, oh boy. Sure feels good to be clean again. I must be ten pounds lighter. You must be. Well, Hitch and Rides isn't exactly the way you keep your school or complexion. He's gonna kill her. I wish that guy with the sax would give up. It gets on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, she gave birth to a big brown baby. Have a drink. Aren't you afraid I might take you up on it? That's why she's having a cigarette. I didn't want to give you a drink, I wouldn't have offered it. Might be a sorry, Roberts. You got yourself into this thing. <laughs> you should be grateful I'm not turning you in. Why, if I wasn't regular, you'd be in the pen this minute, being photographed, fingerprinted, and being pushed around by the cops. So oh my sure. God, you are the Never most annoying woman. Or is your conscience bothering you? No, it isn't. He's gonna kill her. That's the spirit. He's dead, and no woman around will bring him back. Anyway, I never could understand this worrying about something that's over and done with. Now look, Vera, for the last time I didn't kill him. Haskell was a sick man. 
Maybe he was dead before he fell out of the car. I don't know. Sure, sure. He died of old age. All right. So if it'll make you sociable, you didn't kill him. If she makes it out of this room, I I'm going to be shocked. Because he has the face of a man that wants to straight murder. We're out of liquor, Roberts. Yeah. Too bad. I felt like getting tight tonight. Well, I think you succeeded. A mark time? As a prima donna's corset. That's good. I wanted to get tight. Why? What have you got to get tight about? Oh, I don't know. A few things. Huh. You should have my worries. If I had your troubles, I'd stay sober. And I've got the key to that door. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're right. I'm always right. <laughs> I'm the worst. You know, I don't like your attitude, Roberts. Well, there's a lot of things I don't like. Sure. But life's like a ball game. You gotta take a swing at whatever comes along before you wake up and find it's a nine cent. Is she gonna fuck this man? You, Roberts. All you do is bellyache. Taking it easy and also apparently the make the camera's drunk. Maybe that's what's wrong with the whole world. Get the professor. People lock themselves out trying to buck fate. Now take you for instance. You're lucky to be alive. Why well, suppose Haskell had open your door? You'd be playing a harp now. Think of that. You think of it. I'm tired of thinking. There's plenty of people dying this minute. I would give anything to trade places with you. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not so sure. At least they know they're done for. They don't have to sweat blood wondering if they are. Your philosophy stinks, pal. We all know we're going to kick off someday. It's only this woman is like way. straight up bipolar or some shit. But what's got us on this subject anyway? We'll be discussing politics next. Yeah. Like what? Where'd you hide the butts? On the table, sucker. Where'd you hide the butts? We bored each other with conversation for a couple of hours longer. Every five minutes, one of us was wishing we had another bottle or a radio or something to read. Then finally, we ran out of chat. I know it's only 11 o'clock, but I want to get up early and make the rounds of the used car lots. No hurry about that. We've got all the time in the world. Maybe you have, but if you think I want to stay cooped up in this place any longer than I have to, you're batty. It's not a bad place. We pay plenty for diggings like this in New York. I wouldn't like it if it was the Ritz. Liquor. You got a mean cough. Ought to do something about it. Oh my God! Did she die too, just from Camille sickness? <laughs> Nobody you know. She's got kind of a mullet thing going right now. Wouldn't it be a break for you if I did kick off? You'd be free with all Haskell's dough and car. I don't want to see anybody die. Not even me. Especially not you. One person died of me. If you did, well, that's all I need. You don't like me, do you, Roberts? I like you. I love you. What? My favorite sport is being kept prisoner. After we sell the car, you can go to blazes for all I care. But not until then. He must be dead. Us. I'm going to bed. You coming with? Ooh, rejected. Good night, Roberts. Don't try and sneak away during the night. All the doors are locked. Anyway, if I find you gone in the morning, I'll notify the police. They'll pick you up. Don't worry, I know when I'm in a spot. Well, good night. I hope that portable rack isn't too uncomfortable for you. Don't lose any sleep over there. It's gonna be like the scene in uh, Temple of Doom, except instead of fighting a random goon who tries to kill him, oh, he's just gonna end up boning the woman.
Who are you gonna call? Who are you gonna call right now, brother? <laughs> this woman is the worst. If this movie turns out Not yet, darling. that he just Tomorrow. imagined all of this and he actually murdered both of these people, it's probably like the best movie ever. <laughs> if this were fiction, I would fall in love with Vera, marry her and make a respectable woman of her, or else she'd make some supreme class A sacrifice for me and die. Sue and I would fall a little over her grave and make some crack about there's good in all of us. But Vera, unfortunately, was just as rotten in the morning as she'd been the night before. All right, all right, I'm coming. <laughs> she graduated from the university a bitch. So what? The dealers will be there all day? They'll be there all year, too, but it doesn't wait that long. Shut up. You make us like a husband. Well, do I rate a whistle? You sure do, but let's go. Let's go, let's go. I spent 85 bucks and two hours preparing bait, and all you can say is, let's go. <sighs> Come on. It's fucking bitch, man. Bitching about everything. We passed a few used car lots last night down this way. What do you think we can get for this heap? I don't know. Plenty. You let me handle everything. Think we can get $2,000? I don't know, but don't worry. I'll squeeze as much out of this guy as I can. 2000 2000 2000 2000 2000 2000 and listen, don't make any slips and call me Roberts. That'll cook us. I don't need you to tell me that. You better just sit by and keep your mouth closed. Remember, we're both in the soup if anything happens. Forget it and drive. You're my wife, Vera Haskell. Look, after Two the things. deal's closed, let's go back to that place on Hollywood Boulevard where I saw the fur jacket. I want to buy it. After the wow. deal's closed, it's I'm almost 20 grand. You. That's right, I forgot. I guess I'm getting kind of used to you. That's a habit you can start breaking. Place in the middle of block. That's a habit you can start breaking, because I'm done with your ass. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? We're interested in selling a car. If the price is right. Well, if it's in good mechanical condition, it should blue book for about 1600 Tony, take a look at this motor. 1600 Are you kidding? I mean, you should take what you can get, bitch. The car was free! Well, maybe 1850. Before I let it go for 1850, I'll wreck it and collect the insurance first. <coughs> Maybe this motor's seen a lot of driving. And also, you're kind of a bitch, so I don't really want to help you. I just get a real well, bitchy, bitchy vibe. Car, we haggled. Get your jacket, Last baby. We're going we places. Out, we hit a compromise. His price. Okay, it's a deal. All right, come in. We'll sign the papers. I have the ownership papers right here with me. Look, Vera. In the meantime, will you clean a dash compartment? There may be some stuff in it. All right, darling. Eighteen hundred and fifty bucks. That dirty. Oh, no. In New York, huh? Yeah. But you bought the car in Miami. Yeah. Well, let's see about the insurance. We can either have it transferred or canceled. Uh, what kind of insurance do you have, Mr. Haskell? Oh, good question. Well, uh, aren't all the papers there? <laughs> I don't see any. Surely you know what type of insurance you carry in the car. The name of the company? Yeah, but, uh... Well, if you'll just tell me the name of the company, I'd be very glad to take care of all the details. He takes out a gun and well, shoots him. Look, I had to. Yet? Not yet. Well, don't. Uh, we're not selling the car. Well, wait a minute, Mrs. Pascal. Come on, darling. What's the matter? You change your mind? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I guess I have. But, Vera... Let's go. 
What did you find in the glove compartment that you think is such a great thing that we need to keep the car? You got me out of a tight spot, Vera, but I still don't understand all this. You will in a minute. I almost threw away a gold mine. 1850 isn't to be sneezed at. The car doesn't book for as much as I thought. We're not selling the car. You want to keep it? Now, wait a minute, Vera. You said yourself I wouldn't be safe until the car was in someone else's name. I'd like to be free of this mess when I go. That's just it, Roberts. You're not going. There's a drive in at the next corner. Pull in there and we'll get a bite to eat. Now I'll explain. What is this? Another one of your brilliant ideas? Are you thinking again? That is not your strong suit. You're just good at bitching. Oh, can I take your order? Make mine a ham sandwich and coffee. And for you, sir? Oh, I don't care. The same. Thank you. Get this, Vera. I've been pretty patient so far. I've done everything you asked me to do, but no more. Shut up. You've taken Haskell's money. You can have the dough we get from selling the car, but you're not going to keep me a prisoner. It's a good thing I bought the paper. Take a look at that. Vera, I'm in no mood. Read that. No. Yes. No, I won't do it. Yes, you will. You think I'm crazy? It's impossible, I tell you. She wants to get the inheritance? What a dumb bitch. You are so dumb. You are the dumbest bitch of dumb bitches. Are you fucking serious? No one could possibly get away with an act like that. Be wise to me in a minute. Don't be yellow. You look enough like him. The same coloring and the same build. See how his clothes fit you? No kidding, you almost had me fooled for a while. Oh, grow up, Vera. Don't you think a father knows his own son? And there must be other relatives. The father won't have to know you. We'll wait till he gives up the ghost. He's an old geezer and he won't fall through. And as far wow. as the relatives are concerned, they this haven't seen you in 15 or 20 years. Bitch. Eat. I'm not hungry. And I won't do it. It's not as tough as it sounds. Remember, you've got all kinds of identification. His car, letters, license. I could never get away with it. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. The old boy has scads of dough. Look in the paper there. Personal fortune assessed at over 15 million. He'll leave 15 million and 45? Maybe Hold, cut off his son. How do we know? please. It's out, Vera. I won't have anything to do with it. 15 I million. I think you will. Look, Vera, I'll do anything within reason. But not that. So forget it. I'll find yourself another stooge. Ho! Oh, that's 145 million. For the rest of your life, Charlie has Hot to. damn. You can take your inheritance and go away. No more worrying about the rent, no sweat and scheming, wondering where your next meal's coming from. Think about that, Roberts. Vera, please, you're talking too loud. Unless I'm splitting 50 50 with you. Sure, why not? We're both alike, both born in the same gutter. Now take it easy, Vera. There's people around here. You don't know what you're talking about. We'll wait till we read that old man Haskell's dead. Then you show up. Like you read in New York that he was sick. No. Suppose he doesn't die. He will. I know he will. Something tells me. <laughs> but as much as I insisted I would have no part of her scheme, Vera was taking it for granted I would. Neither of us had our mind on the cards as we played that night. I knew we were just trying to kill time between newspaper editions. This was a death watch for Vera. Maybe it was for me, too. Don't you realize if I'm caught, they'll want to know where I got the car and stuff, and they'll have me on a murder charge. Yes, yeah, smart, you won't get caught. Try not for seven. And if I'm caught, she has nothing to fucking out. lose. You need to cut her. You just need to cut her, bro. Points, that gives me 30. Go to the police. Tell her, the, tell her that she masterminded everything. They'll believe you because she's a straight bitch. You know, awful chump, you threw away all that dough in a dizzy long shot. Let me sell the bus tomorrow. With the money it'll bring and what you've already got, a clever kid like you can run it up in no time. Then we'd both be in the clear. I'll be in the clear anyway. Maybe. Maybe. But if I got caught, I'd get good and sore at you, you know. You mean you'd squeal? Oh, well, no. Yeah. I'll squeal exactly. Never mind what you meant. Even if you did tell the cops I was in on it with you. What could they do to me? They might give me the same medicine they gave you. Yeah. A rope. But I'm on my way anyhow. <laughs> All they doing will be rushing it. All right. But think the 1850. Yeah, and to, <laughs> you yourself along and to this crazy video. woman, that's chance. more plausible than him going to the cops and being like, here's the deal, man. You're going to find this body over here. They get a few dollars, they become greedy he died. Order. This woman my came up with my. this plan. She's Please, been browbeating me this entire that, time. General? He got his for being greedy. He wasn't satisfied, so the final windup was he took the count. A couple of days ago, you didn't have a dime. Why, you were so broke, you couldn't pay cash for a postage stamp. 
Now you've got almost seven hundred dollars with eighteen fifty in the offing. Take my advice. Don't try for more. I'm tired of this game. Let's have some blackjack. Play solitaire. Okay, I will if that's the way you feel about it. That's the way I feel about it. Getting sore and throwing things won't help much, Roberts. I'm really doing you a favor. I help you out of a jam by keeping my mouth shut. I show you how to make some soft money. And what thanks do I get? Thanks? Sure. I would you rather call the cops and tell them you killed a man and stole I his didn't money? Kill yes, you did. No, I didn't. You know I didn't. All right, then. Suppose I call the cops. If you're innocent, what do you got to be scared of? Okay. Call them, you mud. Go ahead and call them. See if I care. At least they'll give me a square deal. You want me to call them? You heard me. But I'm <laughs> warning you. Call them. I'm pinched. I'll swear you were in on it. I'll say that you helped me. If I fry, I'll get even with you. You wouldn't dare. You can. Yeah? Then try it and see. Call him. Yeah. Okay, I will. Yeah, I mean, if he's worth 15 million. Information? I want the number of the Hollywood police station. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Wait a minute, Vera. You wouldn't do that. Well, wouldn't do that, and I'll show you if I would. Take it easy now. Let's talk this over. This was early in the evening. You lost the, you lost the nerve, dude. Was at least pitched low. But as the minutes passed, and more obstacles to her plan popped into my head, the air got blue. Each word coming from our lips cracked like a whip. I reminded her that as Charles Haskell, I didn't even know my mother's name where I'd gone to school, the name of my best friend, whether I had an Aunt Emma or not, my religion, and if I'd ever owned a dog. I didn't even know what my middle initial stood for. I also pointed out that the real Haskell had a scar on his forearm. His people never saw that scar. He told me he ran away right after putting out the kid's eye. Yeah, but his father knew he was cut. It had to be some kind of a mark. So what? <laughs> the old man's dead or will be, I hope, by tomorrow morning's papers. Anyway. You could cut yourself a little, couldn't you? Boy, for well, that she got drunk so I fast. Cut my leg off. You're drunk and you're crazy mad, Vera. Turn me in if you want to, but I won't get mixed up in this. Besides, how do we know Haskell was such a phony? Maybe it wasn't the man's son at all. Maybe he just dreamed it up. Well, dream it or not, you won't be dreaming when the law taps you on the shoulder. There's a cute little That's also possible that they put that in the paper up. just to draw and out I hear the guy. Conditioned Arizona's a cinch. Where's that phone? Vera. Leave me alone. Vera. Here. I want a phone call, please. I hate you, yellow stinker. You leave me alone. I'll let you alone when you promise to leave the phone where it is. You're drunk. You don't know what you're doing. You're hurting me. Will you promise? <laughs> All right. Hmm. Assault adjacent. You hurt me. I'm sorry. Fuck you. And it's hot in here. Open up the window. It's not hot. Don't tell me. Now, do you do it or do I do it? You're no gentleman, see? Yeah. All right. I'll open up the window. You can just Vera, rip out the, the cord. Please open the door. Vera, open the door. Don't use the phone. Listen to me. I don't like you, Roberts. You're no gentleman, see? You hurt my hand. And I'm going to get even with you. If you don't open the door, I'm going to kick it down, Vera. <laughs> Vera, don't yeah, he she Listen, I think she has his real name. Say. Vera, let me in. I'll break the phone. Rip the cord, dude. Rip the cord. You can rip the cord. I can rip the cord. Oh, shit. She had that around her neck. <laughs> Please tell me he murdered her. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. That is the best way this could have gone. He murdered her accidentally. The world is full of skeptics. I know. I'm one myself. In the Haskell business, how many of you would believe he fell out of the car? And now, after killing Vera without really meaning to do it, how many of you would believe it wasn't premeditated? In a jury room, every last man of you would go down shouting that she had me over a barrel and my only out was force. 
the room was still. So quiet that for a while I wondered if I'd suddenly go He definitely made all this up. It was pure fear. It's, it's Joker. There's, there's terrible, no way. But without making a sound. Vera was dead. <laughs> and I was her murderer. All he had to do was murderer. pull out the cord from the fucking the wall. And instead he's like... I better not get caught. What evidence there was around the place had to be destroyed. And from the looks of things there was plenty. Looking around the room at things we'd bought was like looking into the faces of a hundred people who'd seen us together and who remembered me. This was the kind of testimony I couldn't rub out. No. I could burn clothes and hide bottles for the next five years. There'd always be witnesses. The landlady, for one. She could identify me. The car dealer, the waitress in the drive-in, the girl in the dress shop, and that guy in the liquor store. They could all identify me. I was cooked. Done for. I had to get out of there. Your goose uh, is fucking remember, cooked, brother. Body, planning carefully how to avoid being accused of killing him. This time he I was couldn't. freaking out at the diner in the beginning. He couldn't even be discreet. Then. I knew it. Felt it. Well, that was a was flash forward. Or this head. is all flashback. I couldn't make myself think right. All I could think of was the guy with the saxophone and what he was playing. It wasn't a love song anymore. It was a dirge. I mean, yeah, no one, no one in their right mind is going to believe that this happened by accident. No way. And he threw away everything that connected him to his real name, which was another dumb fucking move. Because he could just drop all of Haskell's shit here. Oh, shit. Drop all of Haskell's stuff and then move on as himself. But now, since he doesn't have any of that shit either. But my problems weren't solved. I had to stay away from New York for all time. Because Al Roberts was listed as dead and had to stay dead. And I could never go back to Hollywood. Someone might recognize me as Haskell. Then too, there was Sue. I could never go to her with a thing like this hanging over my head. All I could do was pray she'd be happy. Oh, she found a dude immediately. You know it. I was in Bakersfield before I read that Vera's body was discovered. And that the police were looking for Haskell in connection with his wife's murder. Isn't that a laugh? Haskell got me into this mess, and Haskell was getting me out of it. The police were searching for a dead man. I keep trying to forget what happened. And wonder what my life might have been if that car of Haskell's hadn't stopped. But one thing I don't have to wonder about. I know. Someday a car will stop to pick me up that I never thumbed. Yes, fate, or some mysterious force, can put the finger on you or me, for no good reason at all. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting, uh, interesting point to end on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That was, that was very weird. Um, be right back. I'm going to take a little break, mostly to go to the restroom. Be right back. Well, detour. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I do think that it highlights just how dumb a person can be. And it leaves room for interpretation, which is uh, which is something I like in movies. And I do feel like it being short was kind of a good thing because its ideas were were short. <laughs> but it's also 1945. Like I don't know, I don't know when the decision to make movies an hour and a half the standard started. But 
it was about an hour and seven, and I think moments were cut out based on the weird skips in the movie. I'm very curious to see how much better the 4K restoration of it is, because it's in the uh, Criterion Collection. And there already is a 4K version of this movie somewhere. Excuse me. Um, they could have made a good comedy, like a wrongful... See, I, I, we have two different views about it, I think, Shadow. Like, I think if you... I think if you expanded parts of it and really dived into the idea that it could be a story he's making up about what happened, this could be an hour and a half and a very, very good, very like, very, very good movie. Like a good A24, um, low-budge kind of thriller situation. It could be a very black black comedy story or black humor story because you're right, like, everything this guy does makes it look like he's just a giant murderer but it also very easily could be him trying to make excuses for stuff he did. And the way it ends is just so... It's so unsatisfying because it ends with him... The whole story is him going from New York to California, then heading back east because he can't go to either place because his original identity is dead in New York, and now his new identity has to be dead. Um, or is being looked for in L.A. because the woman was murdered. So to me, it was kind of a, uh, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a story that could have been complete. Because then when he gets picked up by the cops, we don't even know why they're picking him up. They could just be picking him up because they're like, okay, we gotta get you off the road, man. And then he thinks he could ride that car all the way to the police station, and then they're like, look, you can stay here for a night, but after that... You know, you, if you're going to hit the road, do it during the daytime. We don't want anyone to get hurt. And then he realizes, oh, shit, they ha they don't suspect me. They just wanted me off the road. Or he could break down and, and just start admitting to shit when they weren't even going to do that. Like, there's a lot of things you could have done with that ending. And instead, they're just like, nope, it ends. And there's no point. Because <laughs> he even says, it's like, at any point, I'm going to get picked up. And not for hitchhiking, but because of what I did. And it's like, oh, it could have been better if there was some interplay with him did he make up the story is he getting picked up for murder but instead they're just like and the cops showed up and in the end and the end um and i do think the movie spent way too much time with him and vera arguing i think that kind of really brought down the whole experience for me where it was like if you paced this movie a little differently and then the vera shit happened a little less a little less arguing a little less annoying then uh, you could have expanded other areas and stuff like that. But, you know, not going to Monday morning quarterback a movie from 1945. Especially one that's pretty decent. Is it the best uh, public domain film according to Wired? I guess so, but according to me, no. I still think the... Um, um, what was the movie? Do you think Sherrod was better than this? Or Charade? However you pronounce it. Do you think Charade was better than this? I do think The Red House was a little bit better than this, even though The Red House has its own pacing problems. Um, I do think The uh, the Naked Kiss is better than this, even as a noir. Um, but it's good. It's in the good column. It's just not the top of the good column. Red House is amazing. <laughs> I am so fucking shocked. Because I mentioned, I, I read The Red House, the book. That book sucks ass. So... The fact that uh, producers and writers got that book in whatever year that came out and made that movie is, is insane. Vera could have been a likable victim who gets tempted by money, you know, like a real character. It, Yeah, she was such a sociopath from the fucking beginning. Because, like, you're right, Shadow. If they had made it where her character comes in, she realizes all of a sudden, like, they could have played out that... Because it was just like she went to sleep, woke up, and was like, you murdered this dude. If it took a while, you know what I mean? It took like maybe a couple more minutes, like two more scenes, where Vera's like, huh, wow, well, there's something very familiar about this car. And then they go to like, they go to get food or something. And then she looks at the name or, or she remembers something. And then she realizes, holy shit, you're the, you're not the guy that tried to assault me. And then she hears the story and she's like, I don't believe you, man. Like, you're you're gonna murder me. And then they have this kind of, they need each other to get across the country and they don't trust each other. Then, like you said, Shadow, she finds out about this 
this uh, fortune and she's like, look, we've already got in this deep. Why don't we really try for it? And then the guy is even like, you're, you are talking crazy. Like we cannot do this. And then the accidental murder, which seems impossible to, <laughs> cause it seems call me crazy, which I'm sure you will, but it seems impossible to me. Absolutely impossible that that dude murdered this woman by strangling her with a phone cord and he did it by trying to pull the phone cord out and not realizing he was strangling her. That seems impossible. <laughs> because wouldn't you, like, just based on the resistance, based on noise, wouldn't you, like, hear something or, or, or tell that something's going wrong? But I don't know. Um, the fact that he, uh, the fact that he murdered, the fact that he murdered that woman, albeit accidentally, that sounds like an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die. The way he did it, oops, because you weren't here. Um, at least I don't think you were here. She got really drunk, and she was like, I'm going to call the police, I'm going to call the police. And he, 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 like, threw her down to the chair, and she's like, you hurt my hand, and he's like, whatever. Then she takes a moment to grab the phone. She grabs the phone and runs into the bedroom, which she has the key to, and locks it. And then for some reason, she like straight up wall, like if this was the phone cord, she's holding the phone above her head and like wrapped it around her neck. I think we're supposed to think, oh, she's drunk. That's how she did that. But she wraps it around her neck and he's like, he is pounding on the door and he's like, I'll, I'll take the phone. That's it. Cause the phone cord for some reason, cause he brought the phone out into the room, into the living area. And then she brought the phone back in. So the cord, even though the cord to the wall starts in the bedroom, the cord went outside of the bedroom and then went back into the bedroom with the phone. So it's the longest phone cord in history that she has wrapped around her neck. I've never seen drunk people do that ever. So she has that around her neck and, and he just grabs the phone cord. and He's like, I'm going to rip it out of the wall. And he starts just pulling and he's pulling and he's pulling. And he's pulling for like a straight minute. <laughs> Only singers with microphones. So he's pulling and he's pulling and he's pulling and then he doesn't hear anything. So then he breaks down the door and she's dead on the, the bed because she wrapped it around her neck and he was pulling on it. So he murdered her and he's just like, what am I going to do? And just grabs his shit and leaves. I don't know. I, I've never, I've never strangled anyone going on record. Never done it. I'd like to think you'd be able to see it. Taking back Sunday. <sighs> What is it with you, oops, and re referring to things that you love that I happen to not like very much? <laughs> uh, Taking Back Sunday is going to be the new um, Gone with the Wind. Great song by Architects. Uh, way too long of a movie. Which, are, uh, oops, I don't think... I'm just going to do it because you're never going to watch it. So let me show you what I did. Um, wow. No, Shadow. Shadow, you are so wrong. Shadow, wow, it has no views. That's good to know. Um, nobody's watching it. Cool. Um, because I know you're not going to watch it because it's literally 49 minutes long. Um, I'm going to show you... Oops, are you still there? And Taking Back Sunday is not the same thing as Newfound Glory. Uh, Newfound Glory has made hits and hits over 20 years and Taking Back Sunday has made like three um, and people love just those hits so much that they've given them a lot of credence amongst the, the scene um, but Newfound Glory has just been hit, pull, pulling out hit after hit after album after album after album and just get no get little to no respect for that but you know uh, oops now that I've insulted you I wanted to show you what I put at the end of this blockbuster review which is on YouTube right now. Um, but I wanted to show you. I'll turn the. All right. So here's how 
the blockbuster review ends. And then I'll do the trailer for what's happening on Friday. But I wanted to show Oops, because I, I put this in just for you, Oops. Um, <laughs> I'm taking a break. <laughs> this is the 49-minute blockbuster review for Justice League. Um, and this is the ending. Which I just realized I didn't do something right for it, which doesn't matter. No one's watching it. So... Because this review was 49 minutes long. <laughs> Don't even know if you saw it. Who cares? Um, the movie we're doing on Friday is The Last Woman on Earth, Roger Corman classic. Looks like absolute dog trash. So... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Here we go. Whatever the fuck, Captain. Oh, there's cockfighting in this fucking movie? This is going to create some issues. On an island of tropical splendor, these three must make their own world. Their own new code of morals. Where are you going? To this one needs Vinny. And so, to bed. We are married, you know, Martin. Increasing tensions reveal the driving, forceful possessiveness of the gambler. Please don't. Oh, that's disgusting. The contrasting sensitive understanding of the lawyer. Uh-oh. Dangerous and violent. I think the version I have is in color too. I have to double check, but I think the one I have is in color. The last if you're the last woman on earth, earth call me crazy. If you're the last woman on earth, why would you wear makeup? Ask me though, Martin. I need you to ask me. All right, Ev, I do want you with me. So he's leaving. And not just because of what he did to you. Did to me? Harold Martin didn't rape me. That's enough. <laughs> okay, bye. Are you uh, leaving because of something I said? Okay, you can't possess the last woman on Earth. So, it, this was just a, a rip-off of Last Man on Earth, but the dumbest version of that, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, it is now time to say goodbye. Um, thank you, uh, thank you to Oops, Shadow, um, past tense anybody who was here and maybe not saying anything thank you very much for uh for hanging out hope you enjoy the rest of your week and um i hope you keep wearing a mask hope you keep socially distancing even as uh these um vaccines go out please uh be smart about keeping yourself safe so that maybe we can get back to some kind of normal as soon as possible and i will be seeing people people I mean, some people. I'll be seeing some people Wednesday at 8 for some type of video game. I don't know what yet. Could be Jackbox. Could be um, something else. I'll be honest. I really want to play a game called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. And I just need to find somebody who's willing to be the partner in that game because it requires at least two people. But I don't know who will be available to do that with me. Uh, also, Friday will be the last woman on Earth. Looks like it might be interesting, if not completely uh, uncool. And next weekend, 
um, because I have to do something Monday morning of next week. I won't be doing the stream on Monday morning next week. I don't know if it's going to be moved to Sunday or later in the day of Monday. I haven't decided yet. So next week will not be at this time on Monday. It might be on Sunday or Monday, but I'll let you know ahead of time. I'll do my best to. Uh, other than that, have yourself a good one and peace.